calculus, find maximum and minimum given graph of first derivative function. This is a recent problem my students had on a test, didn't do as well as they should have. So this bears some analysis. Here we have a graph. It's a weird graph, not a polynomial function. We have a broken graph. This is the figure above shows the graph of the derivative of a continuous function, f between 0 and 4. And so to clarify, I'm just going to go up here and label this graph here as f prime of x. And we have a break here. And now we look at the what is being asked. What values of x is f increasing? Not f prime, but f. B, for what values of x does f have a relative minimum value? Justify your answer. C, for what values of x does f have its relative maximum value? Justify your answer. And then D will be a graph sketching problem based on what we learn in parts A, B, and C. What I show my students is an analysis technique using a little chart here. Chart F, F prime, F double prime to show the relationship between these three views or phases of this function F. So for on the F row I put plus minus, I put an increasing arrow, decreasing arrow, and then this up u, that's for concave up, now and u is for concave down. And on the f prime row, we put the plus sign below where f is increasing and the minus sign below where f is decreasing. And then we put the increasing arrow underneath the concave up and the decreasing arrow underneath the concave down. And finally, in the f double prime row, we put plus here and minus. So this is a basic analysis tool. And what could be tempting is to look at, well, what are, where does this thing have a minimum? Well, it looks like we have a minimum at x equals 2, but the thing we're going to do is pre-justify everything. And so I'm going to scroll up here and exclude from our view the function and just, just look at what we have in our little chart. What values of x is f increasing? Justify your answer. Well, to have f increasing, we have to have f prime positive right here like I'm circling. So I'm just going to do the justification because f prime of x is greater than 0. OK, that's the justification. And so I'm going to write here the rest of the sentence. I'll say f is f is increasing on. I'm just going to put a blank. Okay, we're just going to fill in the blank here. Uh, part parts B and C, and I'm going to, for reasons I'm going to show you soon, we'll go to C first. For what values of x does f have a relative maximum value? Justify your answer. Well, look up here at the chart. You see we, we change from our up arrow on the f to the down arrow, where f prime changes from positive to negative. So I'm going to justify here because f prime changes from positive to negative. So, um, so I'll just write the left here. F has relative max at x, x equals blank, OK? Uh, that's what it's going to be. So now we just have to justify. And then conversely for part B, um, F has a relative minimum at 
x equals again blank and we already know justification because f prime instead of changing from positive to negative f prime changes from negative to positive so it's just a matter of going up and reading off the chart where this happens okay part a we're looking for where f prime is greater than zero well here f prime is above the x-axis here between zero and two x equals zero comma two and also between x equals three and x equals four i'm just circling this portion of the graph above the x-axis so union three comma four easy easy okay part b uh, f has relative minimum x equals because f prime changes from negative to positive where do we see the changing from negative to positive the f graph of f prime goes from below the x-axis to above the x-axis x equals three so there it is x equals Three. There we go. Changes from negative to positive. Okay, where do we have relative maximum? Well, here at x equals two is where we see the change from above the x-axis up here to below all of a sudden. So at x equals two is where we have our relative maximum because that prime changes from positive to negative. Now this is a continuous function, at least f is a continuous function, even though the first derivative is not continuous. So that's it. How hard can that be? It's not hard at all. Now it says, if f of 1 equals 1, use your answers in parts a, b, and c to sketch the graph of f between 1 and 4. So I'm going to erase some of the things I put in here on the graph. And we're going to just leave space to draw what's happening. And right below, I'm going to make a little F, a couple number lines here to help us out. Okay, the first number line I'm going to draw is this F prime to F relationship, and then this F double prime to F relationship. And we're starting at zero okay, in both cases. And then we have a critical number at x equals 2, and then also at x equals 3, because that's where we're changing things. Okay, for f prime between 0 and 2 is above the x-axis, so we know that our function is increasing, and between 2 and 3 we're below the x-axis, so we are decreasing between x equals 2 and x equals 3, and finally between 3 and 4, we are above the x-axis, so we are increasing over this interval. And for the f double prime, we look at our chart again. If f prime is increasing, we have concave up. If f prime is decreasing, we have concave down, or f double prime is negative. So, it looks like between 0 and 2, we have f prime is decreasing. So f double prime, therefore, is going to be negative. Therefore, f is going to be concave down over this interval. And between 2 and 4, I'm going to put 4 over here, we have f prime is increasing, meaning that f double prime is positive and function f is concave up and then we're going to use this little chart that i've shown my classes to see what's going on here okay, if you draw this you can have a segment that looks like this okay in the left hand circle 
upper left function is increasing, but this downward piece is concave down. On the right we have, upper right we have decreasing and concave down. Lower left we have increasing but concave up. And lower right we have increasing and concave up. So these are little pieces that are going to compose what the what our graph looks like. Okay, so now it says for f of one equals one, use your answers a, b, and c to sketch the graph of f. So we have one comma one. So that is our first point that we are given. So I'm just gonna write here one comma one. Okay, and what happens between 1 and 2, okay, we are uh, increasing, f is increasing, and concave down. And we know that our slope is going to be 2 up here, because here's our f prime is 2. So our slope is going to be 2, our little more than 2. Well, it's going to be almost exactly 2 at 2. So we're going to go up to approximately this point here. Now this doesn't have to be perfectly, doesn't have to be exact. And we know that over this interval, we're going to be concave down. And because the F prime is in decreasing a little bit, I think it's going to be just very slightly concave down. So I'm just going to draw this curve here. And you, I hope you can see that it's slightly concave down based on what I drew. Now what happens between 2 and 3? Well, at 2, we are decreasing and we have changed to concave up. And our slope at this point at x equals 2 is going to be negative 1. So we're just going to go like negative 1 looks something like this, that kind of slope. And it's going to go like this. And we know we're going to go down to our relative minimum at x equals 3. There we have our relative minimum. And then we now we're increasing from 3 to 4 and still concave up. So about to here is roughly what it will look like. Again, this does not need to be exact. But this has all the elements of what we're looking for. So this is where x equals 3, rel relative minimum at x equals 3, relative maximum at x equals 2, and the proper concavity. So this is a big deal in, in calculus, understanding these relationships between f, f prime, and f double prime. I hope this has been helpful. Good luck, and thanks for viewing.